Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the JTM Community Podcast, where we are building a community you can bank on. I'm your host, Jason Melvin. Today will be a little different because we are really kicking off our new format. So there's going to be multiple formats to the podcast. Uh, Today's format is guest choice. So for the most part, uh, Will was gracious enough to give me uh, about five sentences worth of what we're getting into today, uh, and I'll let him uh, get into that. So today is kind of what's speaking to him and what's been on his mind for a little while. Before we get into all of that, of course, go ahead and check out j-tm.community slash podcast, where every Monday a new polling comes out with new votes for future episodes, as well as new episodes uh, come out on Monday. So both the new poll and the uh, new episodes comes out on Monday. So depending on the day that uh, you're listening to this, I encourage you to check it out, get your votes in. Uh, your votes do matter. It completely sways what the whole topic uh, is about. There's also sections in there where you can send in your stories, information. Um, if we get enough questions, we'll start having Q&A episodes as well. So send those in. You can do it through the Facebook, uh, really any platform uh, that we we have attached to. So Of course, on the upper right-hand corner is also the TikTok, where you can check out our videos as well as the liked videos for amazing content creators that are motivational, inspirational, humor, and really have that human connection. If you want to touch base with me for advancement advising uh, specifically and personally, you can do that through the website as well. Without further ado, Today we are graced by, it's actually been a little while since uh, we had had done a podcast, not too long, but a few weeks. Um, so Will is a, uh, I'm going to say a good partner uh, for the podcast. He is, I am not going to start with a teacher first. So Will is uh, a friend of ours. He's also married uh, and has, he's an athlete and recently had uh, competed in a three-day tournament out of mm-hmm. 52 teams. Yeah, 52. And your team plays 12th? Uh, yeah, it was just Vegas Worlds. So it was the, yeah. the, Worlds, the Worlds tournament in Vegas. Um, we had uh, 52 teams in our in our division and ended up getting 12th. Not where we wanted to end up, but... Uh, it's still pretty good. Still, still, still pretty good, especially with all the teams that were around there. Um, pretty much all the... A lot of teams from the west coast and we actually had a couple from the midwest actually in your area so oh wow the and lastly also a teacher uh who has been in the education field for a i want to say a decade almost a decade now over a decade over Over a decade decade. yeah over a decade so we a long time yeah (laughs) absolutely folks who have been like "Ah, i've been doing this for 30 years not so long but no to us definitely definitely a while the uh, b- before we go any further, really, I'm just going to turn it over to you. So uh, again, today's format is guest choice with Will being the guest. Um, so he's really going to to kind of take charge and throw curveballs, have a conversation uh, as we go through through today's kind of idea and not necessarily uh, have to be around a topic, but you did touch base with a couple of things. So yep. lay it on us. So once again, thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. And thank yeah, you for everybody that's uh, that's watching and listening to this because it's it's so much fun to get our, our thoughts and things out to everybody. But um, with the holidays coming up, mm-hmm. it's it's always one of those things that kind of, you know, catches in my craw. And we talk about New Year's resolutions and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that, the two things that I wanted to bring about, and we were, uh, like I said, five, five or 10 sentences about what we were talking about a little earlier, right before. Um, but making changes in your life, we've talked a little bit about that in the past. Um, but especially because the resolutions come up this time of year and it's so on so many people's radars, um, talking about that. And then also about smart goal making, not just going out there and, and crushing, um, saying things that you're going to do in like 15, 20 years, but actually looking at the the perspective of making strong goals that you'll be able to achieve. So, sure. um, so when we look at those two things that you're talking about, mm-hmm. uh, kind of combining them together, whether so, uh, resolution, I'm going to sidestep a little bit because yeah. to me, when I hear that, that resolution, when people develop them, they're goals. Um, so you, just, you hope they are, you hope yes. they are. Yeah. Yep. 
the so I'm, I'm going to kind of use that idea of a goal. So mm-hmm. when you think of setting a goal, what comes to mind? What does that mean? So going through my entire life, um, not just because I'm a teacher, but also because I come from teachers, I, mm-hmm. I come from a family that's super motivated in, in making ourselves better, um, even if it's doing it in ways that are a little bit more unconventional, not bad ways of making ourselves better, but um, just kind of finding our own way to do it. Um, we've always kind of used, we never knew what the idea was behind it until I got into the teaching realm, um, but we've always used SMART goals. So making sure that they're specific, making sure that they're measurable, um, attainable, relevant, and then that they're time-based. So like you don't put one out there saying, oh, in 20 years, I'm going to do this. Um, because that's the thing that you always see from people. Well, where do you want to be in five or five years? Well, I want to do this and I want to have kids and I want to have, mm-hmm. but it, you kind of set yourself up for failure because you haven't taken the little tiny steps in, in there. So mm-hmm. when I'm looking at goals and things like that, resolutions, that's what I'm thinking about is, is ways to make yourself better in a short achievable manner. Okay. The, when I think of goals, it's very similar, not necessarily, uh, with the idea of that acronym. Mm -hmm. Um, but to me, and something I had acquired over time and, um, over a countless number of failures, whether it's been, um, health or occupation, whatever it would be. right? Right. Um, is the idea that to me, a goal is one, as you said, it is something that's attainable. Um, and if it is a long-term goal, it has, uh, short-term actions. So wh- yeah. whatever the thought is, whatever the goal is, is it immediately require, requires action. And if there's, if I'm not in a position to apply action, then I don't allow myself to set the goal. Um, cause Absolutely. it would be nice to X, Y, Z, but if I'm not actually going to apply, uh, myself to, to a degree to that thing, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. then I don't allow myself to set it because what I've acknowledged is you're just bullshitting yourself. Uh, And we do it. A lot of us do it all the time. We do. Yeah. Um, When we look at the priorities of our life, uh, it's fulfilling the first 10. And if the 11th doesn't make the cut, but we, we treat it like it is, then we're just setting ourselves up to be disappointed because we said we're going to do this thing, or we thought we would do this thing, but we didn't because of the first 10 things. Um, which is the sneaky point of resolutions, right? Yeah. Um, it, and it really comes down to uh, true desire and commitment, um, which unfortunately is why I can't remember the statistic, but most people break their resolution within the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Right? And that's, 60 days or whatever. Yeah. It, it's, it's within a very quick, because what we've talked about in past episodes is that it takes about 28 days to create a, a habit um, to make a habit of what you're doing. And you, you don't do that by having long-term goals without those short little pieces in it. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions that I, that I wanted to to ask you about, especially in today's episode, because it's the counseling realm was so, is so different for me. Mm -hmm. People, when you're a teacher, they go, you know, Hey, help us with this and help us with this. And they want us to be counselors as well, Mm -hmm. but we don't have that background. We, we care about people. We love people and we want to help them help their lives, but we don't have that unless we've studied it. We don't have that background knowledge that counselors do. Yeah. So when you're coming into, when you're coming into a session um, and you've already talked a little bit about what, what I was thinking about, but when you come into a session and somebody says, I need to change my life and I need to set goals for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you go about helping them with that? How do you go about, um, or how do you go about, um, giving them the thought of maybe putting that thought in their head so that they think it's theirs. Um, and they're more willing to, to kind of go with that because you guys have a whole bunch of different ways that it makes it difficult to do that with people who are, um, coming to counseling, but maybe not opening up or willing to, to take the certain steps that it is to make their lives better. Oh, yeah, for sure. So first thing to acknowledge is that everyone isn't always ready for change. And Mm -hmm. that gets to be okay, right? Um, And it's through um, life experience with their lives changing is that ebb and flow. So that's the first thing. Somebody who doesn't want want to change or doesn't want things to change, Mm -hmm. you can't um, 
put them in a position where it, where that has shifted. You can help evolve that and mm-hmm. you can help uh, get them there. But at, at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of their thing, right? So if I'm adamant of not doing a thing, it doesn't matter how many conversations or experiences I have, that's unlikely to change uh, over time. And as I change that, that can shift for sure. So mm-hmm. uh, one, the, the biggest thing is being, uh, in my opinion, direct and honest um, through having that conversation. So um, without being at least somewhat brash about their situation, right? Um, it becomes very hard for them to understand uh, what's going on. So using general terms, using um, abstract ideas tend not to be helpful. Because uh, again, what we're talking about is action oriented, Right. So if you're talking about a change in mindset, you can be vague. You can have those generalizations because they'll find their own meaning uh, within that. But a really good skill set and not just for counselors, but for anyone that is working with other people that requires people to do things. Um, So a teacher to students, for example, and you you could do actually do this. uh, Look up trainings. I don't know um, what is out there as far as. CEUs for, for education. What, but it's are, C, what are CEU? Oh, um, continued ed. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause I, I've never heard that acronym for it. So, um, the, there's, a, there's a lot in the teacher realm. So what I don't know is if what I'm about to say will, uh, um, applies as those credits for a teacher. And I also mm-hmm. don't know the difference based on states. Um, so sure. I know a little more about Michigan versus, uh, where you're at for sure. Uh, but the training would be called motivational interviewing. The so what it really does is when when you're uh, interacting with somebody and uh, that they're having a conversation of it could be your boss right mm-hmm. um, and they're saying hey we need to do these things is you start to ask the questions to to find out what is really motivating that person right the reason behind it yes yes so sometimes uh, folks will come in for counseling and the only thing that is pushing them to change is because there are significant others chewing their ass and they just want to appease that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's fair because even something like that, it can be enough to begin to make a transition. And as they go through that, uh, it becomes more um, genuine. It's self-induced versus externally um, influenced. Well, one of the things that you br- brought up was them doing the counseling to appease or, you know, not maybe not placate, but just do something mm-hmm. that will make the, the other partner or somebody else happy. Sure. Um, a lot of the things that I've seen, a lot of things that I've read talk mm-hmm. about, you can't re- make real change if it's brought on by other people. It has to be, you know, either you hit rock bottom or it has to be something intrinsically motivated, internally motivated. Um how how do you see how do you see that transition with it? How do you see the transition with it going from somebody who's coming in to go, okay, yeah, I'm doing this to because my wife or partner or whomever wants me to do this. Yep. Um, and it turns into something that's important to them because all I've ever seen is people just do that and then they go, eh, okay, I'm out now. Yeah. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, I've checked the box and then I walk out. Yep. So you're getting into my jam, uh, because I, I love working with all people. Uh, right. But I really, really, really love working with couples. It's, it's something that for a long time um, is definitely, uh, as a practitioner, is uh, my population uh, definitely at the top. The So again, acknowledging that you can't force change and you can't mm-hmm. force lasting change, right? And that's a conversation that happens sporadically kind of throughout that, that process. Um, when you're working, it's more difficult to help a couple when you're only seeing an individual, right? So somebody's coming in and they're trying to like do their thing in their relationship, but you can't uh, account for all or even a lot of the variables because you're only getting half of that equation, right? right. Um, but if you're if you are only dealing with that and you you had asked about that transition, so uh, I'm going to create um, a fake story, if you will, uh, with yeah. you and Rachel. So for people listening, uh, Rachel is Will's wife. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, Will's been having a hard time um, not getting joy out of certain things and, and has been struggling for a bit. It's something that Rachel has noticed. She's pushed and motivated him uh, in various ways to, hey, bud, like you, you got to get some help. Like I'm going to help you as much as I can, but you really got to do this. So Will's frustrated. He's like, fuck, like, all right, like I'll go. Um, and it, there's a, a level of hesitation. So um will seeks help and finds uh i'll use myself just as an example so like will that. comes into the office you have he's having this conversation we kind of like uh get to his actual motivation which is yeah i'm having a hard time but really rachel won't get off my ass he keeps having this conversation um so you asked again about that transition mm -hmm. so initially you're doing it for her yes but if you actually engage in that process of seeking help, it doesn't have to be counseling. Uh, it could be whatever the issue might have been. It could have been a chiro chiropractor, right, right, right. primary yeah. care doctor, or physical therapy, whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but at, as you actually start that process and you start to get some of the benefits from it, now, now that the, so let's say uh, you come in and you're doing the work and you're actually doing some of it, you're not all in, right? Mm -hmm. um, because again, you're, you kind of, um, I'm going to say there was an ultimatum and that's kind of what's bringing you in. So right. um, you're kind of, you're like 50% in, but even with that 50%, you start to notice um, home is a, a little less stressful. There's a little more joy. Um, there's a little more playfulness. There's uh, better dialogue, right? Not by mm. an extreme, but it's noticeable to you. Now, right. those things, now that you've experienced that, those become your actual motivators. Gotcha. Right? right. So it may have initially started with um, Rachel, but they can become yours. Now, the other side of that coin is you have that ultimatum. You come in literally just as a checkbox. You yeah. have no investment whatsoever. <clears throat> that tells you where you are both personally and within your relationship is that you really don't care because you're not investing in it. You only care that not to make any changes, but to get Rachel to stop asking you. So you yeah. can simply say, yeah, I'm going. Right. Um, so oh, yeah. that the difference there is somebody who has some level of insight wanting to change and the other person not, but they're adamantly, they're, they're taking specific action to not change. To not do instead, instead of, instead of just doing it to like, they finally noticed that there's some things that they actually enjoy and like help them out. And they're like, okay, there are other reasons compared yep. to the person who just goes, no, I'm just here to get them off my back. Yep. You used a, a, a keyword earlier, um, which was rock bottom. Typically when uh, that premise is used, tends to be with substance abuse, addiction and whatnot. Yeah, addicts and stuff, substance yep. abuse, yeah. So a lot of folks, uh, I've heard it time and time again over the years and having uh, specifically worked with or within substance abuse uh, for a while, um, there was that mindset that somebody who, who is struggling won't ever make the change if mm -hmm. that change isn't influenced or induced by themselves, right? right. Um, and was something that I had believed as well until I had experience in education to, um, to see and assess it. That's actually not true. Okay. So, and for the same reason. So let's say i am uh, been struggling with alcohol for a long time. Um, and same thing, Rachel's on my ass to, to stop and to get help. And I, I really mm -hmm. don't want to, that the same benefits can happen, right? right. Um, because if, there, if there's a little part of that person that begins the process, that change can still be long lasting. Is it nice to have somebody come in like full bore, 100% committed? Absolutely. Yeah. Is the ability Almost. for that person going to be greater to change? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But don't rule out somebody seeking for help just because they might be externally motivated. Um, no, it has the potential to, to be helpful for them. Yeah, no, that's one of the th one of the things that I love about both of our professions is that mm -hmm. no matter who the person is, um, whether it be some, you know, somebody who needs counseling or a student coming into my classroom, um, who just wants to, who may not know mm -hmm. how to engage with education, but wants to still learn in some way, shape or form there's ways to help. Yeah. Um, 
so kind of going off of kind of going off of that sure we talked about them and you've never heard the term you know you've never heard the acronym was smart goals so the, mm-hmm. the specific and measurable um i'll give you the acronym one more time and then i wanted to ask you a specific question on those yep. um so the s would be specific um making your goals very specific instead of very broad like mm-hmm. we were talking about not going towards the um the 20 25 year plan. Everybody can have a 25 year plan, but it means those little pieces in there. Um, measurable, making sure that you have the evidence that you can actually point to things that you've done or will or can do um, to make sure that you are achieving that goal. And then attainable, is it actually something that you're able to get done? Um, we go back to the R for the relevant and making sure that your goals are lined up with your values um, of your long term goal. And then also time based, do you have a place where you go? you look at it and go, okay, I need to lose 10 pounds in six months. That's some like you, you set a goal for six months and say in six months, I will buy this date in six months. So by June 1st, um, I would have lost 10 pounds and, you know, put that back on maybe as muscle or something like that. It's the time-based piece to it. Um, which pieces of, which part of that would you believe at least in, in counseling somebody through making proper goals would be the most important one to, to fix on. Yeah. So I, I don't think you can break that apart, right. Is that would be like um, putting a puzzle together, but saying you, you can only use half the pieces to get the picture. The, and I think that some aspects can be weighed more heavily Mm -hmm. uh, than others but it's based on that very specific person and their goal. So, so all, all, all situational based. Yep. Uh, okay. b- it becomes very relevant to that person. So um, as you were talking about uh, the different aspects, uh, specifically time, that's a catch 22, right? So mm-hmm. six months to lose 10 pounds. If I was working with someone that is too open-ended and too vague, yeah. because that that's a that's a long time to make a, a mild goal. And uh, some people who might be listening will be like, hey, 10 pounds is a lot. And again, depending on the person yeah, and I'm their the situation, person, yeah. so someone could lose 10 pounds in a week, right? Um, Maybe not very he- in a very healthy way, but yeah, sure. But And it depends on what their situation is. If they're bloated, if they're retaining water, mm-hmm. like, you get rid of those two things, boom, 10 pounds, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it, again, the, the context matters for sure. The absolutely context matters, but if you set a goal, just like you said, 20 years, right. Um, mm-hmm. 20 years might be appropriate depending on what your goal is. So yeah. if, if your goal is having X amount of money for retirement, 20 years is an appropriate goal. Mm-hmm. So if I say I want to lose 10 pounds, is 10 pounds in two years, right. That is a lot of time for me to fuck up. Right. And so because that is too far away, it allows me to one procrastinate. Mm -hmm. It allows me to have the thought of, oh, I gained 15 more pounds, even though my goal is to lose 10. I still got a year and a half. Right. Exactly. There's that mindset that'll happen. And that's in all of us. Right. And in this example, I can guarantee you it's there because Mm -hmm. they push the the goal out two years and they need to lose 10 pounds or they feel that they do. Right. And we're, we're going at this approach that this is a healthy person. So no eating disorders, nothing like mm-hmm. that. Cause that, that changes everything. Um, but that, that exact mindset. So if I was working with somebody and they said, Hey, I want to lose 10 pounds. I would have, I would begin to have the conversation of the, is the it attainable behind it? Yep. Uh, what is your action? What's your motivation? Um, why, right? The relevance piece. Mm-hmm. And then try time is the very last variable that I would assess for because that controls everything else. So if to do this thing, these are the actions required. Um, the more they can invest in the actions, the shorter the time. So if somebody's going to go to the gym five days a week, they might reach that goal uh, faster than somebody who is going to go and I'm not going to say go to the gym, but be active one right. time. Being, being, being active for five or six days a week would do it a lot more than somebody who only has two to three days a week. Yep. So, the, so uh, in my practice, and this has evolved over time and mm-hmm. now it's without fail, 
no matter who I see, um, whether it's families, couples, individuals, um, the kids, doesn't matter. They always leave, always leave without fail with homework because I know the bulk of the change doesn't happen in my office, right? It doesn't happen in, in our conversation. It happens in the, in the, the life they live outside. Mm-hmm. So if they're dealing with anxiety, they have to have a, and build a foundation out of the office, right? I can't tell you how many times um, working with couples or families, uh, individuals where they would say, I wish I had you in my pocket, right? Um, right, because appreci- they, want, they want that person to sit there and poke them and go, hey, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Right, which I, I appreciate the idea and the yeah. gesture, but it's something that I work so hard to not be a thing. Um, but right. you want them to be self-sustainable. You want yes. them to be able to do that on their own, not just yep. not just rely on somebody else to give them that that um, that influence and pressure. Yep. Which uh, once uh, folks get to a point where I know they have the skill set, they have shown it, they engage with it, but they have moments where they forget, and we all do. We all do. I do. I have tattoos as very specific reminders mm-hmm. um, for that very thing. Is over time when things are calm or stressful, we become to default or become complacent, right? So yeah. you, you're motivated to lose 10 pounds in, in six months. But as time goes on, um, the holidays are coming. What, what's likely to happen? We're going to eat a little worse and mm-hmm. we're probably not going to be as active because we're traveling or it's cold out, whatever our reasons are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's food everywhere. The... So in those moments, sometimes we just need a reminder, right? But it also has to be um, appropriate for us. So if we have the mindset of, I'm going to do perfect, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a single piece of pie, right? Um, I'm going to have no Baileys in my coffee, right? Whatever that thought is. Right. Um, if that is appropriate for you and that is actually attainable, cool, Right. But if, if you're being honest with yourself and it's not that your Christmas morning ritual is like cookie coffee with a little bit of Bailey's, right? Um, not that I'm trying to promote day or morning drinking um, as much as just a tradition that I know some folks have. I've done some, it. So. Some do. I have as well in the past. So it's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> the, but if it's not, mm-hmm. right? Um, if, if that's not actually attainable, but we treat it like it is. What is often going to happen is when we already self-sabotaged ourselves. Mm-hmm. So when it does happen, we feel like we failed. So it all goes out the window. Right. So you have a piece of cake. You're like, hey, blah, blah, blah diet only going to, um, if I treat myself, it's only going to be on the weekend. It's Wednesday, you're at work and they're throwing uh, a potluck for Thanksgiving that was the next day, right? And you had a piece of pie and you had that feeling and you felt that you failed. So the mindset that often will set in for somebody is I already fucked up. So I might as well indulge. All right. right. Yeah. So they'll, so then they'll eat fucking everything. They'll finish off the pie. They'll, and I'm guilty of this myself over the years for sure. Versus understanding of, Hey, no, I had that piece of pie. Mm-hmm. I wish I hadn't, but that's fine. I'm not shitting on myself, but I don't have to have four more. Yeah, you don't have to go and eat the rest of the pie just by yourself mm-hmm. in a dark corner. So, and it, we have like these weird mindsets, or or even buying. Um, let's say you get a pizza, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and people have this idea of, "Hey, I bought it, so I need to eat it," right? Um, and if you're trying to, if you again, your goal is to lose ten pounds over six months, just because you like the money's already gone. If yeah, you, you paid the twenty dollars. That's gone. There's no getting that back. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you ate two pieces or three pieces in your full, right, but that thing's tugging at you, right, whether it is, hey, I already like broke my agreement, so I might as well indulge or, hey, I spent money for this, I don't want to waste it or or whatever it is. Anything after the point of your, you, you feeling or you achieving sustenance, right, is that's just damage now. One, you're already full, so you're not going to get more fulfillment in that sense, Um and you're you're just going to continue to sabotage as you yeah. as you consume, um, but the money and money's already gone. So like our brains tell ourselves like all this bullshit 
Um, that's just one example based on um, kind of that goal you had mentioned, the, the 10 pounds. and 10 pounds, yeah. Yeah. And so you, you kept going back to the sab- self-sabotaging, self-sabotaging. Sure. And that's, that's one of the things that I want to point out. And going back to the, the initial start of what we were talking about was um, I absolutely hate the New Year's resolutions. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you were talking about the SMART goals, yeah, the, the goals need to, you need to be specific. Absolutely. It needs to be um, looking directly at something um, and they have to be kind of fluid depending on what the situation is, which is why we use smart goals in teaching a lot because we have to look at individual students um, and all the kids are different. But now going into the thought of New Year's resolutions, I dislike them, number one, because it always seems like they're gone within the first four or five days because of that, what you were talking about, that's self-sabotaging. Mm-hmm. Um, for number one, what are your thoughts of New Year's resolutions just off the bat? Yeah, I th- um, I want to <laughs> talk about both sides of the same coin. Right. So great that there's a cultural thing that uh, serves to try and push people to self-reflect mm-hmm. and um, put it, create this idea of some kind of change that they, that they may want, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that part is an, an amazing thing. It also creates the idea of procrastination, right? So January 1st is out there. It comes the same day every year, mm-hmm. right? Um, and to, to me, it shows up. Um, there's exceptions to this, absolutely. But it shows a level of commitment or lack thereof, right? Because January 1st isn't special. No. And if you wanted, if I wanted to quit smoking today... I could just say, hey, tomorrow, like, that's the thing. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to stop. Or I can let my brain spin the wheels of procrastination because it's delaying the work. That's all it is that I'm going to start on January 1st. Right. That's, that's that side. It can also be that, that goal-oriented date where, hey, I got to get myself ready to quit smoking. I don't smoke, by the way, um, to quit smoking <laughs> on January 1st. And for those who smoke, like, zero judgment, just Right on you. Yeah. More of my own info. The, so it's a, it's a catch 22, but to me, it, it shows me the mindset of the person um, when they're trying to develop the thing. And oftentimes the actual resolutions are culturally motivated. Mm -hmm. There are things that um, are happening with other people, right? So it tends to be like weight loss or, it tends to be financial oriented um, things that are kind of culturally pushed mm-hmm. when it becomes more to the core of the person. It has much greater value and sustainability for them. Well, it, it ties right back in with what you were talking about when you're doing counseling and doing it because somebody else has asked you to do it sure it goes right goes right back into it because you're doing it because of some other motivation mm-hmm. and the the first of the year thing fucking yes, great tie in will damn thank, thank you i'm trying i'm learning from you um so good but but we have we have that the first of the year which is like new new life reflection mm-hmm. like you were saying reflection new life new beginnings um new possibilities when when actually what you just said was awesome, it's just another day, mm-hmm. but it seems like we wait for that holiday season to be over so we can indulge ourselves and then go, Holy crap. I just put on 25 pounds during the holidays. Now I need to lose weight or, <laughs> yep. or, you know what? I drank too much. Now I got to stop, you know, now I got to stop drinking or, um, we have, we have a couple of friends, mm-hmm. um, that, that do just these just for themselves and they do it because they want to. Um, they stop drinking for a month or two months. Mm-hmm. Um, they increase their their physical fitness level just because they feel like it's something that they need to do. And that's that's what I, I like to see in people, that motivation that comes from inside instead of, like you were saying, culturally motivated, somebody yep. else pushing you um, yeah. to get that stuff done for yourself when we're more reactive. Mm-hmm everything than proactive instead of saying like you were talking about thanksgiving party 
oh, I had one piece of pie. Okay. Instead of eating the whole thing, I'm just going to make sure that I focus on my eating, focus on what I'm making. I'll go home and make my lunch instead. Um, and, and come back and do it the right way instead of just waiting for that one day a year to say, oh, everything's going to change because it's new. Yeah. You know, I, lo- I love the, the metaphor behind uh, like the thought and the figurative language behind it. But like you were saying, it, sometimes it just seems a little. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. If it's too broad, too general, too vague. Right. So we're not, I- not motivated from inside. Yep. And that's where, again, the benefit and the damage of resolutions due to the new year, January 1st, come in is that one, it's a very, it feels good because it's very communal. Like Mm -hmm. the whole fucking country is doing it. Um, We almost create these expectations of ourselves and others. So it's, it's feels for a lot of people like we're going in this together, which is really good. Right. Yeah. Um, But with that mindset, especially, so let's say you are decently motivated but the other people that you engage with, they weren't, but they Mm -hmm. talked about it and now they've failed. So it's very likely, not always, but it's likely that their failure uh, with their resolution is going to become an obstacle and make your ability to fulfill yours more difficult, depending on the connection and relationships you have with those people. Mm -hmm. So you and I uh, come up with a plan. We're like, Hey, no, like this is, we're going to do this together, blah, 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 20 pounds. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And as we go, we're in week three and I fail. Right. And not just fail for the day. Right. So I like hella splurged. Right. And then like, I'm totally off. Like I I gave the whole thing up now because we entered that together becomes typically will become more difficult for you. Mm -hmm. Um, Because the the motivation, the background person, the um, I think what we used to call them back in um, college was accountability partner. Yep. Absolutely. Um, The, but the flip thing or the flip side of that is also true. So you and I are going and instead of me falling apart and quitting, um, but I acknowledge my struggle to you right? and you continue to kind of lead that and and do your thing that can help uh, continue to propel me so that I don't, I might've messed up for the day, but that Mm -hmm. I don't fall off uh, the wagon. So it, again, context matters. Absolutely. But that really is the kind of the catch 22 with, resolutions being um new year specific great in the idea it's a wonderful thing that Mm -hmm. it can motivate and push people um have some um self-reflection to to kind of figure those things out a little bit yeah but if that person's really doesn't have at least a, a decent level of commitment to that thing and where that thing is action oriented then it tends to tends to fall apart the recently the podcast isn't aired it'll actually it'll show up tomorrow um it's set on a schedule so it'll be tomorrow's episode um i chatted with branson and his wife michela Mm -hmm. and the idea was talking about burnout but uh as a as a small part of that because again of the new year was uh, a small chat on resolution um and through that process what I began to understand, and we'll use continuous weight loss as a tangible thing, mm-hmm. um, is where people err is in their head, they say, I, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. So the focus is the result. Yeah. Which is where things can, the, it becomes more difficult, right? Mm-hmm. So because I might be doing really good um, working out, um, watching my, not a diet, but eating well. Right. Eating better, I, yeah. yeah. I lost four pounds. And then the next day I got on a scale and I'm up two pounds. Right. And that, that can be jarring, mm-hmm. but that's only when the focus is the result. So if I went into the new year, cause we're talking about new year's resolution, right. And I had, the goal was I'm going to eat healthy and be active three times a week. Mm -hmm. Now I'm focused on the work. Right. You're focused on the journey instead of the actual like finish line. Yes. And and the 10 pounds is a byproduct of the goal that I had because the Mm -hmm. goal was eat well, active three days a week. Yeah. 
So I might lose 10 pounds. I might lose 25 pounds. Or you might actually gain pounds, pounds because we yep. muscle, you know, the yep. muscle, yep. muscle yep. weigh more. So it, it, it depends on, I, I love that thought that you just brought out was that it's about the journey. It's about the piece that you have to look at in every step that you take. Mm-hmm. And that's why, that's why I look at those, those measurable pieces, um, in the smart goals when we're working with, not just in the counseling world, when you're working with like, how can you tell if you're making progress, but with students in your own life, um, all those different places where you go, okay, how can you show me that you're doing this? Well, I, I kept a tracker that said, okay, I worked out here. I worked out here. And I, you know, I went on a, an hour and a half walk with some friends on this day. So there's my three days for the week. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Now what about your, your eating? Like, yeah, your nutrition, how did you, yeah. how did you eat? Um, and it, it just kind of goes back to that. Where is the measurable and how can you track yourself day by day? Because most people get caught up in that, like you said, the end result, mm-hmm. and they don't focus on the important piece, which is that journey, that travel. What is it going to, how is it going to change you as a person? Yeah. Um, and when we talked about it in the, in the beginning, it takes 20 days to make a habit. And if you're saying, okay, by the end of this month, I'm going to, you know, X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. Okay. So did you track it? Were you able to measure it? what is it relevant to your life and something that you actually wanted to do, or is it something that you had no purpose in? Mm -hmm. Um, And were you able to effectively plan it out and then make sure that all those steps are there before that, before you get started, because if you don't, Mm -hmm. you're already setting yourself up for failure. Yep. And it becomes having those things in place is its own motivator because you can you literally see the accomplishments that you've had the successes yeah. that you've had where you were when you started and where you are now um every every day that you mark off hey yep did that thing or yep did that activity or nope nutrition was spot on that day whatever those things would be and it goes way beyond just we're just using the tangible uh goal of weight um, loss yeah yeah weight loss but that's applicable. So if I use a student, right? So Mm -hmm. they initially come in and they say, um, blah, 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 this is what's going on. Um, I'm failing the course and, uh, I need to pass. Cool. Right. So now we look at the tangibles. Is is that even an option? Like, is that a thing? Is there enough work? Is there, is there still enough time left? Not just the last week of school? Yes. So So let's say all those things check out. Cool. The next thing is, what are you doing now that has got you the grade that you have, right? Mm -hmm. So haven't been doing the work, haven't been turning it in, haven't been studying, haven't been doing the readings, like all of these things can feel super overwhelming. Cool. Let's, let's break it up. What does your life look like? Okay. Now, just like you have these things scheduled, right? So you have, um, actual school time, like Mm -hmm. that's allotted for, maybe you have a part-time job. Um, whatever those things are, you begin to schedule the studying aspect into that as well. So whether it is doing the homework, doing the reading, where it becomes a very action oriented task. So is, is the real goal to pass the class? Yep. But the goal that is set is every day or depending on their schedules, these three days out of the week is mm-hmm. I'm going to do uh, this work. Shit, we'll talk about our adult friends, right? Yeah. Um, and they won't care. So Mason and Garrett, our friends, adults, um, come from very different backgrounds. One, mm-hmm. both have been on the podcast. So one uh, military, the other Ministry, um, going, yeah. yep, and, and going through uh, a counseling program himself, right? And yep. At so many moments we talked about, because uh, they, they both have this a little bit, is the, a sense of procrastination. And I mean, then, I think most of us do. Oh, yeah, but... yeah, most definitely. The, and as that time gets closer, uh, what they would say, they would have um, conversations of, even though they were procrastinating, the things that they knew they needed to get done were still weighing on them, mm-hmm. right? So it's taking a toll because they have to do it and they haven't done it. And it adds this added pressure. So oh, it just keeps, it keeps adding and adding to everything else that they have going on their plate. So yep. both of them are, both of them are parents. 
Yep. Yes. So yep. all all of it adds up to that. Both of them are married. So it keeps adding on to that every single time because you have new things that pop up in your personal life, mm-hmm. um, in your relational life with your kids and your spouse. And it's just like yep. even and, recreational. And, and, yeah, and we're and we're impacts, all guilty yep. of it. Yep. But so it, I'll use Garrett as, as an example and uh, props to Garrett because he, mm-hmm. he has continued to grow and develop, uh, which oh, yeah. is awesome. So something that I've noticed uh, at least the last couple of months, um, he'll talk about his plan for the week mm-hmm. and he'll get his shit done ahead of time. So there will be three days. He doesn't have to worry about fuck all when it comes to school, right? Versus yeah. in the past, it would continue to weigh on him as he's trying to juggle family and all these other Mm -hmm. things. Now he's, he's way more proactive versus Mm -hmm. reactive, um, which alleviates those stress, the the additional stress that that would have carried for three days. Um, And then Mace, I mean, he's done. I I think he's literally done now. So he didn't have to worry about school. (laughs) And no, he's, he's done and and just coming back off deployment. So he's, he's got some, some rest time that he's got to, to kind of get all that stuff back in order. So, and I, I don't know yeah. how he, how either of them do it. Number one, mm-hmm. military and kids. And then, you know, Garrett with two newer one, two newer kids. It's just like yep. the way that they've started to being able to schedule their stuff out and actually be pro, like you said, proactive instead of reactive, because if you react too late, that's the, when the kids come up or when a person comes up right before the deadline and goes, I didn't get it done and I need to rush and do it. Well, now your work's probably not going to be as good. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. a lot of people go, well, no, I work better under pressure. Do you really? Yeah, that's bullshit. It, is it, do, do you really? Or is it just the fact that you really don't care after you're done because it's finally over? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like we said, we're, we've been guilty of it as well in our past. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh, yeah. But that, that proactive, like actually setting it up, Mm-hmm. is is a perfect for it because it sure. keeps you going on the right on the right path yep but it takes it takes that pattern of continually doing that to make sure that you get in that habit and go okay i can't get out i can't get out of it i can't get out of it i can't get out of it yep. um which is what people forget the um, it's the self-reflection and self-awareness and this is applicable to, to truly everything yeah is somebody who is willing to be objective about themselves and call their self on all their shit so, mm-hmm. uh, you, I used to go to the gym and like do all these things and this, we're talking 12 years, uh, in the making and various points of my life, my life, my brain would tell me all these reasons, uh, excuses, blah, 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 blah. So what I acknowledged is that depending on what was going on in my life, I couldn't work out in the morning because these were my reasons by the end of the day, I couldn't do it because I was too tired, worked to kick my ass, right. all these things. Uh, that's just some of the some of the examples yeah. I can give. So what I understood is I know what my brain's going to do and it does have an influence on me. So I'm going to resolve all of them. So to various degrees, now we have a full gym uh, in the basement, but it wasn't always that way. No. Um, so it started with a total gym, right? And then getting some weights and it just grew over time. But I knew that if I had it in the home, there was no excuse mm-hmm. that would be valid because when it's winter, it's too, too cold out. Roads are too icy. They're too snowy. They're mm-hmm. whatever, right? It's going to take longer to commute to the gym than it would be for me to actually work out and get home. Like all these reasons when yep. it's, when it's too hot, it's too hot and all like all this bullshit, but by putting it home, I have, have no excuse. And you eliminate that excuse. Yeah. Yep. And there's days where I still don't want to like apps today was one of them um had had we had this scheduled mm-hmm. um i did a bunch of uh, work through the beginning of the day i have a crazy busy day tomorrow in the morning and mondays is where i do all the work for the podcast mm-hmm. the editing building updating website like all of this stuff right um but i knew i had that additional time strain so instead of me putting it off and then dealing with the bullshit I did all of that today because I could Mm -hmm. and I was able to put it all on a scheduled timer. So it'll automatically take care of itself tomorrow. It's already done. I don't have to sweat it. Don't have to worry about it. Right. But that's somebody calling themselves on their own shit. I knew what would really happen if I delayed it. And I knew that I would be stressed. I would get a little overwhelmed with trying to be in five places at the same time. 
-hmm. So I could take care of three of them today, which makes tomorrow much, much more manageable, right? Mm -hmm. um, like Garrett uh, with his school is, he was like, hey, no, I, if I do it now, this is my goal to get it done now, then I have three days where that, that thing's off my plate. Life's a little more manageable. But it takes somebody to be objective, truly objective about and call themselves out, which doesn't feel good in the process. It, it really does. It sucks. Yeah. It, it feels nasty. Um, but if, if you practice that, like anything else, one, it gets fun and two, you let, you begin to, uh, get a sense of humor out of it because it's truly ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like the ridiculous shit our brains will do. They'll convince us of things that aren't true that are, and they'll convince us things aren't true that are that are true. Um, but when we, we acknowledge those things, whether it's in relationships or um, the work we do or, or getting an education or applying ourselves, or I have this brilliant idea, I really want to do this thing. Right. But then when you're objective about it, you think it's a great idea, but you really don't want to do it. Right. Um, yeah. If that feels um, it becomes, that thought becomes way more objective and honest and the guilt goes away. Because if you think it's a great idea and you tell yourself, I want to do this thing, but you know, you're not going to, you avoid the kind of like the, the self deprecation of you didn't yeah. do the thing, but you really, you were never going to do the thing. And that's fine. Like we're not all doing everything all the time. We can't. Well, but that, that comes back up to back to the whole piece of um, setting goals for yourself and making sure that you're being proactive instead of reactive is that, you know, <laughs> somewhere inside of that none of us are perfect oh, sure. at least at least we should understand that not a lot i don't know if how many people know that these days or not but um because everything on social media tells you you're perfect no matter what but oh. understanding that if you fail you're going to learn from it yep. like that's that's where so if you fail one day like you talked about you have one you're like crap i i, I messed up on this day that doesn't mean if you're aware of yourself that doesn't mean you just go off and and kill like kill your goal that you had for yourself you go okay i made a mistake now i can see where my body reacts how my you know how i reacted in that in that state and go off and and adjust your goal to make sure that you you fit it perfectly and can get back on track mm -hmm. like you said if with the accountability partners if you make a mistake but i'm still going that's my job to not like, that's my job to come back and help you because that's what we're doing. We're trying to keep each other accountable. And sooner or later, one of us is going to slip no matter what, because we have life just comes out of nowhere. Yep. And um, it's my job in that situation to be receptive of the help. Yeah. And for me not to be a douche about it and, and not call it like, I can call you out and say, Hey, you you failed in this, but we can get, we can get you back on track, not say, well, you screwed up now. Just leave me alone and let me do my thing. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, that's that's the piece. So kind of where I want to go with the rest of this for, for the last little bit is where what are the steps for those people that are listening and watching um, to make sure, like if you could boil it down to a certain number of steps and we know everything's situational, we know that we want to make sure that yep. we understand ourselves and be self-aware, but what would be the basic rules of creating a goal um, for yourself or for um, a situation in your life that you want to get through and be able to come out on top of it? What would be, what would you say that would be? Yeah. So a really practical exercise, um, not just with four goals, but change uh, overall. And mm -hmm. it, you can do it very, very quickly is for anyone to grab a uh, paper and a pen or pencil. Um, mm -hmm. you, you can do it digitally as well. Um, I feel that it's a little more helpful uh, old school because it engages uh, different parts of your brain because we're on computers all the time, we're on phones all the time. So it's a, it's a little bit different uh, in the way than the neurons that'll, that'll fire in your brain. So I'd encourage folks to go that way um, is to write everything down, mm -hmm. right? And then cross off anything you can't change. So all of the things the, you don't have control over you, that you don't have any control. So okay. the goal is, um, I want to make X amount of money or, uh, let, we'll use the student. I want to, I want to get an A in the class. Cool. Um, so you write it all down. 
how much time is left, how many assignments, how many points, how many um, have I been doing the work, all, all of these things, you write it all down. And then anything that you have no control over, you cross it off, right? Because mm-hmm. our brains will focus on the shit and they'll take our cognitive resources, our emotional and, and our time up. It'll just it'll ruminate, which actually sabotages the other side of those. Because you're putting because you're putting the blame and stuff on everybody else except for yourself for not reaching that goal. Yep, where the, the action is with with us, uh, kind of similar to what I was talking about of um, working out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is that understanding of my brain's going to give me all of these excuses, the ones that I actually control, I did. So now there, there's nothing left, um, which is why I'm relatively flawless. Um, at doing that side of this, this whole thing and, and have been, been for a while. And I've been flows. I'm not saying it's easy, but no. it lays out the, the work. These are the things that I, I know I can do. And when people are struggling with like depression and, and anxiety specifically, it'll sabotage the mindset and mm-hmm. it'll filter everything through that. So the things that are possible all of a sudden feel impossible. Right. But when you, what if somebody takes that little exercise it, it'll lay it open that no th- this is possible does the work still have to be done absolutely are mm-hmm. you motivated to do it probably not but for the people who are waiting to do the work for when they feel motivated you're doing the shit backwards because the motivation yeah. comes with the confidence of you becoming competent and keeping your word to yourself so day 28 of that routine is when you feel motivated yeah. Right. And, that, and that's what we talk about when the teaching world is that backwards planning. You plan from the back. You plan from what do you want the kids to know at the end? How do you want to feel at the end? What do you want the end goal to be? And then you backwards plan and how to get there um, yep. each and every day until you from when you start. Yep. You're trying so. to buy a house, right? Mm-hmm. You don't start with buying a house. Nope. Right. You start with the conversation of I'm going to save five dollars off every paycheck. Right. I'm yeah. going to save a dollar a day. And then you, you start to apply that and then you make another change and another change and another mm-hmm. change. And then five years, 10 years down the road, you have your down payment. So the fir- the, if I'm hearing you right, the first three kind of things that I'm hearing is write everything down, just write it down, cross everything out that you know is that you're not in control of. Yep. Can't do a thing about them. And then start schedule, like start making a schedule for the things that you can control. That's the, that's what, if I, if I heard that third one correctly. Yep. That, that, that's pretty good. Uh, in the sense of literally scheduling it on or mm-hmm. in your life. So here's the difference. So somebody is creating a goal and they say, I want to work out three days a week. Cool. Sounds great. Super yeah, open-ended. Sounds, sounds fantastic. Super open-ended. Mm-hmm. If I'm working with somebody in a session and that's part of the conversation they're not leaving the session with the idea of going to work out three days a week. We're going to look at your life. What days, what time were you going? Mm-hmm. Right. And you're going to have that set up before we leave. And one of the first things I'm going to do when you come in is say, Hey, how did it go on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and again, it is that, that level of, um, it's great to have an accountability partner in counseling and to, to some degree um, is in part that not that it's an innately that, but people will have a sense of that. So if, mm-hmm. if somebody's working on a thing, they know when they go to the next session, that thing will be discussed, right? right? Um, and they want to have, ideally, um, there, there's a sense that kind of pushes us to want to have good news um, yeah. when we have that conversation. So Go ahead. Do you, do you think, do you think that, um, because you were talking about how the counselor can kind of be that accountability partner, but mm-hmm. you, you as the counselor want to be over here on the side yep. and just being able to help in, you know, when you're needed and not be that consistent pushing force. You would don't it, want to be the, the crutch. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So would, would you, would it suggest to, share your journey with somebody and just say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm going in counseling. I'm in counseling to do this. Um, especially if it's the counseling thing and you're wanting to make yourself better through counseling, Sure. but lay it, lay it out for somebody that you trust in your life to be that partner for you so that they can check in on you and say, Hey, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. Or would that be that crutch that you don't want them to have? Yeah, no, it is 
finding the additional uh, motivators for people and the part of that mindset, part of it is the whole reason for building JTM community, mm-hmm. right? Is to, uh, it's, it's not just a, f- a nice phrase to, to have at the beginning of every podcast or on the website when uh, acknowledging building a community that you can bank on, right? It's a play on words, ATM, JTM, mm-hmm. um, but the community aspect, that, that, that's a real thing. Um, and we know that we're going to be way more successful when you have a community that you can rely on, where you have people you can engage with and talk to that'll push you, not even necessarily directly push you, right? But I see Will is, um, he's going to the gym. I see mm-hmm. Garrett is um, doing his shit ahead of time, right? All of Still those going out this week, yeah. Yep. Those are indirect motivation, motivators, uh, things to inspire me to, oh, I could do that better. Oh shit. Yep. Will's going, I better get up and go. Right. Even if we didn't have a conversation and if I, if I am struggling, I can say, be like, Hey, Will, but like, haven't chatted, uh, with you in a little bit. Like, these are the things, right. Mm-hmm. How did you do this different? Like, I, I see, I know it's not easy and I see you like doing X, Y, Z. Right. So having those people in your life, absolutely. I, uh, can can be uh, very very beneficial and is is a big part of what we're we're trying to build ultimately. I love it. This so, is a really good segue into it is. send in your questions, send yes. in your information and stories. This is a community you can engage in. Not not just your stories, all but your achievements. Yeah, things that, you're achieving, yeah. things that you're achieving on your own. Maybe if it's just a picture of you finishing a marathon or some whatever it is. Um, your achievements, your struggles, things that people, things that not just Jason can help out with, but other people that are involved with the community can, you know, come and support you and give you ideas. And we've talked about it in the past. Not everything is going to work for everybody just because it worked for me or just because it worked for Jason or just because it worked for, you know, our buddies that have been on here um, and other, other podcast um, guests. Mm -hmm. It's just, we want to give, suggestions that might be able to help you and if it helps great and if it doesn't then we have then we're here to help find other things for you to to motivate you or to you know get you to that place that you want to be and that's why that's why i love this thing so we have write it down cross out everything you can't control make a schedule on stuff that you know fit that schedule into your into your plan and use the community around you to to keep yourself accountable Is there anything else other than that community piece that you would suggest before, you know? Really to to boil it all down is be tangible and action oriented. Those Mm -hmm. things, ideas are fucking awesome. I love uh, philosophical, theoretical conversation. They can spark things uh, in the mind and motivate people from within to to have various changes. But the thoughts don't mean anything if they're not put to action. I don't care what we're talking about. It truly doesn't matter. If a thought never leaves your mind and becomes something in in the real world, Mm -hmm. right, the value stopped with the thought itself. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing that I love about that tangible thing and writing it down in on paper. And yeah, we can say it's tangible if it's on a computer screen, Mm -hmm. but if you have that in a notebook or if you have that on a piece of paper and it's up on your, um, it's up on your refrigerator or it's up on your cabinets or it's up on the door as soon as you're about ready to walk out and you, you remind yourself of it um, every single day. Hopefully it won't get annoying and it'll keep you motivated. <laughs> so. Even even mild annoyance is motivating, right? Yeah. There's very few things that can motivate somebody like, like anger. Um, Oof, controlled anger, channeled anger can fuel and and cause so many changes Um, when it's not controlled or at least contained. um, Of course, anger can also do a a whole lot of damage for sure. And be, but be comfortable with change, like, or, or don't be comfortable with change, but at least experience, try to experience it because it's something that goals try to do is they try to change you Mm -hmm. and you can't be afraid of making that, taking that step to improve yourself. Mm -hmm just because you're afraid, afraid of some small changes, like, Oh, it's going to change my whole life. It may or may not. You, you won't know until you actually try and make and get yourself out of that comfort zone. Moral of the story. Get moral of the story. Get, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Get Yeah. I like that. I love that. That's what I try and teach my kids all the time, but eh. 
Some of them are catching on. Yeah, I was going to say, it takes time and it's not it for everyone for sure. No. Thank you so much, Will, for Thank you. engaging in today. Uh, I really enjoyed myself. I don't know uh, how it was for you. I know the format was uh, was a little different. Um, <laughs> I'm and, as nervous as I'll get out. <laughs> and the, the goal uh, of this format specifically is to allow guests who have their own insight, their own lives, their own struggles and motivations and challenges uh, to be able to have a conversation that speaks uh, truly to them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for what you had brought in, and, and I appreciate uh, your mindset being kind of, hey, we're coming up to this uh, phase of the year where people tend to do this thing, like this is speaking to me. Um, really enjoyed our conversation. I enjoy okay. all the conversations. So I always. I was going to say, so this isn't special, but I'm going to change that to say they're all special. They, they are all special. But, <laughs> but remember, if, if everything's special, then nothing's special. Yep. Yeah, you don't get the joys without the pains and, and vice versa, for sure. Exactly. The Thank you for everyone uh, who is turning, who has been tuning in. Uh, of course, please check out j or j-tm.community slash podcast. Send in your votes. Uh, a new vote starts every Monday morning. A new episode uh, gets published and aired uh, every Monday. You can follow us through the website. Uh, you can follow us on Spotify, on YouTube, the Facebook. Uh, and if you have those things that have motivated you, inspired you, if you have questions, all of that, send it to us on Facebook. It's likely to, to end up either in the podcast, on the website, uh, on Facebook. The whole goal is truly to, to continue to build the community um, where folks can just kind of be perpetually inspired. It, we don't have to have the same interest or even views. Uh, okay. The whole goal is to appreciate the differences, the, um, the struggles and create that human connection. So um, please share those things. And if we get enough uh, questions, we'll begin to have Q and A episodes, which you and I have talked about. I truly hope that it gets there uh, is something that I feel like would be super exciting and, and directly um impactful for for mm -hmm. the community at large I'm just gonna go type out like 40 questions real quick. you're just gonna send them all anonymous <laughs> questions ah. are coming in the uh of course uh check out the website get in uh your your votes there there's additional resources recently had uh added uh, a resource uh, on there. So please check it out. It's Veterans for USA. It's actually uh, a local nonprofit uh, in the Mount Pleasant area. Wonderful, wonderful work. You check out their website or their Facebook. Uh, they um, have fundraisers and uh, currently are selling candy bars and tons and tons of stores to help uh, support vets. Uh, they do a lot of work for um, housing and helping vets who, who are homeless and a ton of other stuff. Um, not too long ago, they did free haircuts, um, working with community uh, partners as well. Um, they recently had donations for Christmas dinner, which I think the time, no, you still have a little bit of time. Uh, if you were listening to this before December 15th, um, they, uh, they have, uh, that as well. So you nice. can donate, I think it's 50 bucks and it's a, a giant meal for a vet and their family. Um, again, doing wonderful work. So, uh, check the tech, check them out, uh, veterans for, as in the number USA, um, in our local area. Without uh, further ado, Will, thank you so much thank for you uh, your work and uh, helping in the new format. Truly, truly appreciate you coming in. And for awesome. everyone listening, thank you so much for being uh, part of our community, a community that you can bank on. You belong. <laughs>